Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to LS11. Uh, my name is Darren Harper, and joining us as ever for your weekly slice of Leeds United is our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives. It is Ryan Wilson. Morning, mate. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you? All right. Yeah, I'm not bad. I'm not bad. Good news, good news. Uh, and as well as ever is our former footballer, uh, play for Leeds United, amongst others. It is, of course, Ben Parker. How are you doing, Ben? Morning, mate. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm not bad. Not bad. How's uh, how's lockdown treating everybody this last week or so? Are you all okay? You all, go, you all right? Yeah. yeah. Not... Mm. <laughs> Watching TV, Netflix being out in the garden, doing a few bits and bats. Oh, really? We're quite lucky, really. The weather's been all right. Um, you know, if, if this was happening in October, November, and it was just chucking it down and freezing, it'd be a little bit more depressing than it is now. But, yeah, just making the best you can do of the situation, I guess. I think so. Um, I, I must admit, I have gone all Mr. Miyagi uh, in the back garden, uh, and mm-hmm. I've done paint up the fence, paint of the fence. Uh, <laughs> the hardest thing to get at the moment is fence paint. Um, have you have you tried to get onto the B and Q website? I'm just asking. Have you tried to get on? Yeah, they do virtual queues at the moment and all that sort of virtual business. Queue, yeah. And then as soon as you get to the end of the virtual queue, the website crashes and you can't. <laughs> get anything. Brilliant. It's, uh, so luckily, there's a hardware store in Featherston, and mm. I uh, walked along there and bought some fence paint. Um, so forest green, very nice as well. Very nice. nice. Very nice. nice. Um, okay, uh, we've got, of course, a little bit of a different show uh, for you today. Of course, we're live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube, so do get in contact with us. And we want your memories of Norman Hunter, because we've got a very special uh, tribute uh, for, about Norman Hunter coming up. Uh, so a bit of a different show. We're not doing the Alioski Files this week. We're going to start up with some uh, news straight away as well. But uh, first of all, some big thanks, of course, to our sponsors, The Athletics, smashing it when it comes to written coverage of Leeds United. Now with the podcast, The Phil Hay Show, every week, Phil joining Dan Moylan to bring you expert insight into the goings on at Ellen Road. Plus, there's breaking news, big name interviews, the manager himself. Check out The Phil Hay Show on the link in the description and on your favorite podcast app. And of course, our other sponsors, The Social Maze, huge Leeds fans offering social media management to a range of businesses ensure the business you own or work in maximizes its social media potential packages starting from 99 pounds and the terrace offering quality football merchandise you won't get in your club shop loads of quality gear for leeds fans and they sponsor any news graham and we'll find out more about them a little bit later on in the show this is ls11 so live streaming right now on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. So do put your uh, uh, comments in. Uh, we've got to say as well, got to say uh, just a, a wave because I think he's watching now is Gary Devonport from our uh, brother from another mother podcast uh, talking shut. Um, who um, I, I, is he? Is he still in hospital? Is it? Uh, I messaged him yesterday when he was he was in hospital mm-hmm. yesterday. Um, yeah. I hope yeah, he's all- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like like I say, Darren. Um- there's a blood clot on his uh, lung, he um, is said. Is that what uh, it was? On the lung? Yeah. Um, I, I, might, I, might, I might be wrong on that, but it's, it's something along those lines. But, um, no, obviously we all wish him um, a speedy recovery because we all know what, what a top guy he is. does a lot of work um, um, with us as well. So um, get well soon, Gaz. Aye. Yeah. Give us an update, Gaz. <laughs> yeah, it's an update, uh, Gary. Uh, we want to want to see how you are, but obviously, uh, best wishes, and uh, hope you're staying safe. Um, uh, so, if you've been watching stuff on Netflix, then Ryan, before we get onto the news, what have you mm-hmm. been watching on Netflix? I need to know. Um, um, Better Call Saul, the latest series. I saw the <laughs> season finale last night. La 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 la. I've got about three or four episodes to go, so don't uh, say. Ah, right, okay, okay. There's one more season, isn't there? There's one more season they're doing, and then that's it. Yeah, well, yeah, it kind of, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but yeah, I watched the season finale and um, it was good, quite spicy. Good spicy. Yeah. <laughs> spicy. Ooh, a bit of spice. <laughs> it's a bit of spice in there. <laughs> um, what about you, Ben? What have you been watching? Yeah, Ozark, near the end of season three now. Very good. 
still got a bit of that to go as well, really. I was watching The Innocence Files, I think it's called, on um, Netflix, which is a new one, sort of like from the people that did Making a Murderer. Um, and it's all about people that have been wrongly, wrongfully imprisoned uh, for like, you know, 25, 30 years, and then they find out they were innocent. Uh, and then they get released. It's, it's, uh, that was quite amazing, really, to, to watch that. So, uh, and there was something on, I don't know if anybody caught it, ITV showed like a documentary about Euro 96. Brilliant. Last week. Did you watch it, Ben? It was brilliant, Abs- wasn't it? Absolutely. Fun. That, that was kind of my first proper memory of football, Euro oh. 96. <laughs> really? um, vi- vividly a bit of um, 94 World Cup. But right. 96, where I can properly remember watching the games where I were, uh, brought some great memories back, actually. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Did you watch it as well, Ryan? I didn't watch it, no. Um, I, I missed it. But um, 96, it, it was class because it was a, a red hot summer, as I can remember. Yeah. It being a glorious summer. And where I live, um, in Rothall, Ben, you probably know the next village across Woodlesford. Um, there's yeah. Thorpe, uh, what's it called? Uh, Fleet Lane, sorry. Fleet Lane, yeah. where the really good West, pitches are. West Riding. Yeah, that West Riding now it's called. Yeah, well, that's um, Spain, trained there. They were staying up at Alton Hall Hotel and they trained down on Fleet Lane. And um, as kids, we used to go and kind of stand against the fences watching like all these like players trained Spanish lads it was class but yeah it were um a red hot summer and um it were I think because it were on home turf that were one of the most gripping things in football for me I started watching football a bit earlier um my first season yeah. of football were watching Leeds win the title so that always stuck with me forever which were great but um on an international level um watching the year 96 is 96 on home turf with some of them players we had at the time were just incredible wasn't it brilliant I just can't when it's when you get to that Germany game and you just see Gaza just miserably nearly getting yeah. the goal. Oh my god, it just I, I I totally forgot about um Darren Anderton's chance when he hit the post. It's mm. I to- totally forgot about because obviously yeah. Gaza's the big one that like everybody remembers. Yeah. Yeah. If you just um, wore a size a pair of ten boots instead of a size <laughs> nine, but yeah, Darren Anderson, that was the big and it was golden goal again. I forgot about it, it was golden goal. Yeah, you forget that. Yeah, mm-hmm. oh, what what a summer though. It was great, and there was also there's also a, a, there was a documentary on I think straight after it about the kit suppliers Admiral. Mm. Um, who, did a, who did one of the first uh, really nice Leeds United kits. And there was a lot of stories. It, it was a bit in there. I was watching it last night. And r- randomly, I'm watching it, and they were talking about how they approached Don Revy and um, uh, got the deal to do the kits uh, for Leeds United. And uh, the, the the person they had as like the talking head to talk about this yellow kit, the yellow away kit that they first produced, uh, was Norman Hunter. Uh, All right. I'm like, oh my word, it's Norman. Um, so it was it was really quite poignant. I was watching that last night, and it was uh, it, it was it was amazing. I must admit. But '96 mm. is the first time you remember playing football or remember watching football. <laughs> first World Cup I remember is '82. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fe- I'm feeling really old now, really old. '82, <laughs> I remember that one. Um, okay, keep your comments coming in. We're going to go through lots of your comments. Uh, right the way through uh, today uh, on the uh, LS11 podcast, of course, live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube. You can comment on either of those and we'll bring you those uh, a little bit later on in the show. But as as we say, we've got a very special uh, Norman Hunter tribute uh, coming up. We're going to be hearing from a lot of fans. Uh, We're going to be hearing from uh, a lot of other people as well. You've caught up with uh, a few people. We've got Eddie Gray on the way. Uh, We've got Jermaine Beckford. We've got Simon Grayson. Uh, as well, um, uh, on top of a, a few more as well. We're going to hear a little bit from Norman Hunter as well um, in the uh, very special Norman Hunter tribute that is coming up a little bit later on. So keep your memories uh, of Norman coming into your comment section and uh, we'll go through those in a little bit. But let's crack on uh, with LS11 this week with the news. <laughs> Is the enemy's grand? 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 Is the enemy's grand?
Yes, indeed, it is time for Any News, Graham. Uh, and uh, where should we start uh, this week for your Any News, Graham? Well, let's start with coronavirus, uh, Ryan, because there's been some uh, been some uh, news linked with Leeds United. Of course, we know about Norman Hunter dying uh, from uh, coronavirus. Um, but uh, also, uh, Massimo Cellino looks like he's got it as well now. Yeah, apparently Massimo Cellino and his daughter have both um, tested positive for the coronavirus, which... It's well, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, Italy is in quite a bad state. They're a few weeks ahead of us, aren't they? In, in the the terms of the, I don't know what I want to call it, the life of the virus. But um, yeah. yeah, it's um, a, a bit mad, really, that it's um, Massimo Cellino's back in the headlines, but for for the wrong reasons. But he's he's also then been kicking off a little bit, apparently, about um, the Italian leagues being suspended, not suspended, sorry, actually just just dumped, get rid of them and, you know, and then start again. But the team that he owns are currently bottom of the league. So um, he probably has a different agenda on his mind to scrap the league system. So, um, yeah, Massimo Cellino, former Leeds owner, and his daughter got coronavirus, apparently. Uh, yeah, so we wish him well. Hope he uh, sort of recovers from that. No no doubt about that. Um, I, I don't know if there's been anything else. There was a few murmurings about what the EFL were going to do. I mean, there's, there's I, I did see Phil Hay uh, write a little bit about uh, maybe they're just going to, like, uh, just shut it all down um, completely. I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of room. Mm-hmm flying around uh uh ben i don't know if you've heard anything else uh with uh, your uh ear close to the uh the the line about uh, what what's going to be happening with football no no well um luckily enough we got to speak to patrick bamford last week um, straight straight after this podcast um and he, he spoke really well did patrick and um he just he just said they're they're working towards um a training start day i think 16th of may so it gives the players yeah. something to work towards. But again, everything's flexible. Everything's changing from day to day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the, the, the one thing that uh, it's still staggering, and I think we take it for granted now, the amount of people that are dying uh, in, our, in our country, um, let's say on a day-to-day basis, over 800 people yesterday died. And I think, I think yeah. we, don't, we don't really pay much attention to that. You, just, you, you take a step back and you think over 800 people have lost their lives due to this virus. Yeah. And we're trying to start football back up. And don't get me wrong, we are, we, we're desperate to have football back. But I can't see football starting until, until all this is... Is, is is more or less done with. If someone comes up with a, a vaccination, someone can guarantee the safety of players. Um, been watching quite a lot of um, of like ex players, pundits talking about this scenario, and um, I think it was, again, I think it was Gary Neville. We we we, we speak highly of him on here, and <laughs> um, again, it, it nail on the head. What happens if um, right get the get the green light to start football back up, but two, three players within a particular squad don't want to go back because they've got someone who's vulnerable at home and they don't want to bring the risk of contracting this um, this virus and taking it back to one of the vulnerable people within their household. So I, I don't see like how you can, across the board, 100% get everyone behind it because people are going to be still scared and, right, and rightly so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, yeah, you, like you say, eight hundred odd people a day uh, at the moment dying, and you know, whew, it's scary times, mate. It's scary times. Uh, how long this is going to last for? It looks like we, we mentioned Italy in that uh, the top story with uh, Massimo Cellino, and it looks like Italy are going to be starting to relax some of the lockdown. Uh, over the next uh, few days. So um, if uh, that's anything to go by, they're about three, four weeks in front of us. Um, so maybe by the end of May, um, things might uh, sort of start relaxing. Uh, we, we, we don't know. Um, well, you, say, you say that, but Italy's had a lot more aggressive lockdown than us. You know, like we're, we're, we're still fairly relaxed, you know. Um, I think so. Um, you look know, at Spain I, and then kids aren't yeah. even a- out of their houses in Spain. If you've not got a back garden, tough. Mm-hmm. You can't go anywhere. Exactly. At least with us, we're allowed to exercise. You know, go out just for a walk, and obviously go and get shopping, which is really important. But I mean, I, I see people living around me walking the dogs about eight times a day. You know, and you know they're not sticking to that one hour walk your dog once a day type thing or one hour exercise. You know, we are quite, you know, 
relaxed here as it is, uh, whereas Italy, Spain, that we're, we're a serious lockdown. There were police everywhere, literally dragging you back to your house if you if you were, or, or finding you, arresting you, or whatever. You know, if it were that serious, it were. Yeah, so um, it's quite difficult to say how we can follow on from Italy and Spain because as yeah. is Spain and Italy, or Italy we're talking about primarily, they might relax their lockdown just to how we currently are, you know, um, just allow people to still, well, still be locked down, but maybe go out and get a little bit of exercise or something. So I guess it's like Ben just said with the, the football front, um, everything's changing on a daily basis. There's, there's no right or wrong way of doing it right now i mean the right way is just keeping people safe and saving lives you know and that's that's the most important thing it, it, like we we want football to be back of course we want football to be back but you know i think ben's it nail on head there with with the players you know you know imagine the players they've got vulnerable family members or or whoever that they come into contact with then yeah. they're having they're having to go out and play against you know a, an opposition team of a squad of what 17 18 plus all their staff are in the vicinity and and then their own teammates and players and stuff you don't know where your teammates and players have could have picked something up so there's still so much risk to it all um it's just crap really in it you know um it's just like so there's no right or wrong way it's difficult to even analyze it but um obviously yeah. fingers crossed everything gets better soon and we can start being a bit back to to normal yeah you don't know where only of your teammates are picking stuff up, even if you, especially if your teammates Carl Walker. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think oh, Jack really. something else there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> um, elsewhere, um, there's a little bit of uh, transfer rumour and speculation yep. all around this uh, youngster, Cameron Brannigan. What, what have you found out about this? Um, young player, Cameron Brannigan, is um, apparently leads in Burley, uh, Burley, Burnley, uh, <laughs> interested in him. Um, Oxford United midfielder, 23-year-old, he's played 36 games this season, scored seven and got seven assists. So um, some pretty good good going there, some good 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 stats for Oxford United. He's a former Liverpool yeah. youth player and um, Leeds and Burnley sniffing around him. So, um, yeah, it's another rumour that's popped up this week. Uh, nice rumour, liking it. Um, <laughs> also, clap for carers. Now, Leeds United uh, have uh, been doing these uh, clap for carers and uh, a number of sports teams have been doing it. But there was one face and one little video that came on uh, last week on the Leeds United uh, clap for carers video uh, that everybody was just like... <gasps> Oh, uh, had <laughs> like Leeds gasm um, when it happened. Um, David Batty, David Batty, he's alive, he's around. Oh, he, yeah. We don't see him anywhere or, or anywhere. What, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's, he can clap. He's still well. It looks really. Looked, looked, yeah, I'm just gonna say there, Ryan. Yeah, how good did he look? Mm, look good, and he were really happy. Big smile on his face and clapping his heart out. It was great to see him. I, I were obviously some some famous fans ex-players on on them videos it's brilliant you know a really nice gesture but then when david batty came on i think well <laughs> the Leeds united internet blew up you know i went on social media and it was david batty david batty so that was brilliant to see him it was really really good to see and there's no doubt about that and if you've not seen that then uh, where have you been um have a little look uh and uh, find out um and finally uh in the news um, is this. Now, I absolutely love this story, um, which is this young Leeds fan, Daniel Orton, um, who he wrote to Brighton and Hove Albion asking if Leeds can buy Ben White at the end of the season, which is a lovely little thing to do. He said he's counted his pennies in his piggy bank and he had £15 and sevenpence to use. Uh, the, this is the lovely bit. Brighton Chief Executive Paul Barbary wrote back to Daniel uh, saying, thank you for your letter. And he has a good eye for the up and coming talent, and he should be a scout one day. Um, Barb went on to say Ben White is part of their plans, they're unable to sell him, which is very disappointing. Um, at the end of the day, but I think haven't Leeds United and, and Ben White's trying to get in contact with Daniel Orton as well to have a chat with him. I think, um, I think so. Yeah, I've saw Ben White um tweet out something like, um, can Daniel Orton family contact me or something like that, and um. And you know how good leads are with things like this. So I think did Andre Radrizani put do, say something as well? Um, oh, he kind of, I think he's said something as well. I'm kind of inviting him to Ellen Road. I think when things get back to normal. So uh, 
Yeah, you know, it was a really nice gesture and, and a fair play to Brighton as well for for writing back and you know taking the time and they put it on their social media and it just you know times like this it's it's just a really nice story you know football Lovely. football you know it, it's insignificant to what's going on but just a little little letter like that would have cheered that lad up and it's cheered a lot of people up like ourselves seeing it on social media uh it certainly did it certainly did uh well that's all the uh, uh other news uh in uh, any news graham this week any news graham brought to you of course by the terrace providing unique football merchandise uh that connects fans to their favorite footballing moments inspired by retro kit culture and iconic legends you can get your hands on anything from phone cases beach towels to their ever famous kit mugs the terrace uh more than just an order number and i always like putting the banner up for uh the terrace cause especially for events that <laughs> <laughs> Chipping out of the mug, it gets me over. And, and look, there he's down. He's got a phone case. There we go. Do, do you know what I think he looks like when when you have the mug? He looks like you know Easter when you get the Easter egg on the mug. Do you, do you know when you you know like like Kit Kat or something used to do? We used oh, to get yeah, a yeah. Kit Kat mug with an Easter egg sat on top of it. It looks like one of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um we've actually had a um a message as well from i'm just going to try and find it as well because uh there we go um let me just got to try and find it hold on a second of course we have so many comments coming in yeah um, trying to find it but uh, there we go no that's not it it's uh it's definitely to ben there we go i found it okay so it's from leon has ben been cutting his own hair he is looking <laughs> sharp uh, so uh ben have you been cut your hair doesn't seem to have grown i've not had mine cut my beard has gone all a bit grizzly adams um so uh ben have you have you been cutting your hair what's been going on well, no, first thing, morning, Liam. How are you doing, mate? Um, he's, just, he's, he's tried to stitch me up there. I've uh, been on a few <laughs> nights out with Liam. and um, Hopefully not recently. Uh, oh, yeah. That, there's loads of places <laughs> to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, obviously, your head's been sharp and on point at the moment. But, um, no, but ba basically, when you're as bald as me, this lockdown's um, come at a good time because now it looks like I've actually got, got some hair, so... <laughs> um, but no, I had it cut for, um, so it was the Saturday before the lockdown got announced on, on the on the following Monday. So what's that been, four weeks now? Coming like that, yeah. Four, like that. Been nearly five, I think. Well, be five, yeah, five, five yeah, on Saturday, yeah. it'll be well. Yeah, so, I think so, yeah. It's, it's all right. So this is five week growth then, because I've not, I've not clipped it since. And it's, it's oh, no, I, I, I clipped my face. I haven't done that. I thought I'm just going to let it like go. Full hipster. Uh, soon, and I'll see how long this will grow, and then maybe I can have like a top knot. Um, <laughs> oh, Christ, <laughs> look like a real idiot. We, uh, we, we, we know it's bad when um, the time comes and we have to do a um, a podcast live shaving of the head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure if my head would look good. I think I would look awful if I shaved my head. I would look like one of those eggs on that mug then. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely would. You definitely would. Um, keep your comments coming in, of course, and uh, we're going to be running through those. You can comment, of course, we're live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube uh, this uh, this morning. And, of course, if you're listening to the uh, audio version of this, then make sure you like, uh, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you give us a nice five-star review. This is LS11. Well, we had the uh, very, very sad uh, news uh, that uh, Norman Hunter uh, passed away uh, at uh, the end of last week. And uh, we thought on LS11 uh, this week uh, we'd do a very special uh, Norman Hunter tribute for you. Hunter, what tremendous confidence there all along the penalty area past three Sunderland players by Norman Hunter. The Lorimer inside for Johnny Giles. And Hunter coming up fast to drive it. Oh, and what a goal! What a goal by Norman Hunter! Uh, I love those little bits of uh, uh, commentary uh, that you put together, Ryan, um, because you sort of, I, I love watching sort of older football and seeing that sort of like time from uh, from from Leeds United because it was just such a, a, an epic time. There's no doubt about that. The really sad news that came through uh, last week that the Leeds United legend, and that term is used 
far too often, but this is a, a bona fide legend. Norman Hunter passed away at the age of just 76, uh, making 726 appearances over a 14-year period. Um, ben, I mean, come to you first of all. I mean, you, you would have you know, worked with Norman uh, a number of times. Uh, what, what were your thoughts of the man himself? Um, firstly, um, my thoughts and um, everything like that goes out to, to his family. Um, ne ne never got to meet his wife, his kids personally, but um, go go back to Bryn Law and um, Bryn put a, a fantastic tribute out onto onto the uh, club's website about how he started off as a, a young broadcaster um, co coming in coming into the game, and um, the, f the first game he covered was the Leeds v Liverpool Charity Shield match. I think like ninety two was it ninety one ninety two, and um, one of the first people I came across was Norman Hunter. Fast forward a couple of years later, he's um, doing the commentary along alongside Norman. And still to this day, every, every time me and Bryn do a game together, I'm always asking him what was he like, how did he see the game? Um, because for me, starting out and do, doing all this kind of stuff, I, I've, got, I've got to try and learn. And it was better to learn from than, than um, the legend that is Norman Hunter. And just little, little um, one-liners here and there, and um, and then thank, thankfully, and I, I got to uh, speak to him, meet him a few times myself down at the games, and we've all seen and read what people have come out and said about Norman about um, yeah, he was um, <laughs> he was a tough guy on the pitch, but an absolute gentleman off it, and obviously I've knew, knew him off the pitch, and I, I have to echo what everyone said about him. He was one of the nicest blokes you've ever met. If you didn't know Norman Hunter, you you wouldn't have known he was um, this superstar footballer. Um, it just had time for everybody, whether it was me, a Bryn Law, um, a catering staff, a cleaner. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do. He'd go out of his own way, speak to these people. And to me, that just sums him up as, as, as a man because... Um, in, in, in sport and industry, in your industry, Ryan, you come across people who've um, been there, done it, they're a big name, and they don't really have time for people. They're just they're kind of all about themselves. But what well, the people say, um, don't don't meet your heroes, don't don't meet your idols. But no, don't don't believe that one second with Norman because what everyone said about him is that and and a lot more. And it's 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 difficult. Like um, we're we're trying to do this tribute to him. I don't think we'll probably do it as justice because of the, of the guy he is, but the amount of people that got in touch with you, Ryan, past players, uh, past managers, just shows what type of person what, when, and what he meant to the club as well. It's, um, it's going to leave a massive hole. And uh, pe people like Tom, Tom Kerwin, I spoke, spoke to Tom Kerwin when the nose broke because I know um, he, he were close with him, worked with him as well. And he says... There hasn't been a, a game when he's been working with the club. There's not been a home match where he hasn't seen, not or spoke to Norman. So it it just shows it's gonna. And uh, Stuart Dodsley as well, who's in ch in charge of the um, like the the care and the sponsors, um, does a lot of work. Does Norman with Stuart and people sticks as well. People who've been working in the club for years and years. It's it's gonna feel strange and um, just quite not right seeing seeing Norman at Ellen Road, but. Um, but yeah, the, the word legend gets used far too much, but um, he's a legend every sense of the word on the pitch, but more importantly, off the pitch as well. 100% mm. yeah. agree, Ben. 100% agree. Um, I, I, I was gutted when I found out the news. Um, I've met Norman on about, well, I met him quite a few times, but the the, the one time that sticks to my mind is when I very first met him. Um, I was in a hospitality in the, the East End actually, and um, me and my wife went, um, and we were just sat having his food. And Norman Hunter walked past. I said, "It's Norman Hunter." I jumped up and I said, "I can have a picture, Norman." And he, and he went, well, right, you're, "You're a big lad, aren't you?" And I, and I said to him, "I said, I am. I used to be a defender like you, Norman." And they were like, "Oh, a good lad." And then I thought, after I thought, Christ, I'm comparing myself to Norman Hunter. I've just had a picture with him, and I'm saying I used to be a defender like you. Yeah. I'm six foot four. I used to be a centre half for local teams, and I was pretty shit. So I'm comparing myself to, to Norman. And do you know what? He had time. He was chatting. He was chatting to my wife. Um, and and I just thought, oh, what 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 a top guy. This were about four or five years ago. And then this season, 
um, covering the football for Leeds United for, for LS11. I sit up in the gantry and um, where we were sat earlier on in the season, if you're listeners of the square ball, you've probably heard Moscow go on about this. There's an area in the gantry what's a light full of flies and it's it's insane. It's like something off a horror film. Well, that's where we were sat um, for the oh, first okay. bit of the season. And Norman kind of sits along from it um, in in a in a in a, um, a chair like they've just grabbed from hospitality or something. It's not the proper seats in the gantry. It's just like a, a chair that they put in between where I was sat and where Phil Hay and, and Moscow White sits. Yeah. Um, so watching the games with Norman, I mean, he was so passionate. You know, people saying like you could see him kicking and feeling every ball, and he honestly was. And you know, sometimes his language wasn't the best, but. It, it were great, and he'd, he'd reach over and grab all. You go, did you see that? Oh, that were good, or, or the opposite. Did you see that? He should have been passing it over there, not over there. You know, and he were just getting involved. And I, you know, to me, I, 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 I don't. We don't know each other, but he took me just as I am a person and as a football fan, and were talking to me, spent time talking to me about it and his knowledge and and his insight were incredible as well you know so a lot of people say back back in them days the football were a little bit different maybe um, some of the tactics are not as wasn't quite as advanced as, as some of the tactics are nowadays but he just still knew everything you know he still could see everything it was certainly a lot more than me you know it it, it was great and um and what a guy you know I, I I'm from a Leeds United family um but um my dad, my my uncles, that's that's Norman's era. And um, you know, sitting around family tables and talking about leads, it were, you know, your your Lorimers, Norman Hunter, Billy Bremners, these names are just brought up every week. Um, you know, he is a legend, he's an absolute legend, and like you said, Ben, not only on the pitch, but off the pitch. Yeah, on the pitch he had this this tough persona. Um and I like that, you know, it's the spirit of Leeds is that, you know, when we've had people come back to Leeds, like you, 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 you know, your David Batties and people like that, and they put a tough challenge in Leeds, fans love it. And that probably all stems from players like Norman Hunter back in the day, you know, being tough and playing for the shirt and playing for the city. It was just absolutely incredible. And, um, you know, he's unfortunately gone, but he'll certainly never, ever, ever be forgotten. He's, he'll be a legend for, for Leeds United forever and um, I'm glad that you know um, that there's going to be a memorial so I'm sure Leeds United are working on something right now we're in quite difficult times to be able to do something proper which that's the most heartbreaking thing because it'd be nice to celebrate his life properly yeah we're doing a tribute now um, like you said Ben how can you pay a, uh, properly pay a tribute to somebody like him it's 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 difficult. We, we've done our best. We try and speak to former players, fans, and uh, things like that, and people can say their piece. But it's going to be difficult to ever put a proper tribute to to a guy like him. And um, you know, obviously, my thoughts are with his family and his friends. And hopefully, when things get a bit more back to normal, we can properly celebrate the life and give him a send off that he deserves. Uh, quite right. Well, let's hear from uh, some people uh, right now. Let's hear from a uh, lifelong Leeds United fan, Jill Ward, and her memories of uh, watching Norman Hunter. I first saw Norman Hunter play at Elland Road in 1971, and it was obvious from that moment on that he was going to be a hero in my world. A fantastic player. I know he gets a lot of uh, press coverage for the tackling um, and his audacity, but Underneath all of that, there was a fantastic skilled footballer. I've been incredibly lucky over the years that I've had a chance to meet with Norman and chat to him. And it wasn't always football. We, we spent one evening talking about our love for Lanzarote and it seemed we stayed in the same hotel, but sadly not in the same week. Um, when the news came through that he had died, I was devastated along with the majority of the Leeds family. He was a legend, and it's and it's a word that's used a lot these days, but the true definition is someone who is very famous and admired, usually because of an ability in a particular field. And I think that word legend sums up Norman very well. He will be greatly missed around Ellen Road, and my thoughts and prayers are with his friends and family at this incredibly sad time. Rest in peace, Norman, and thank you for all that you did for our wonderful club. Uh, wonderful sentiment uh, from uh, Jill, of course, um, and uh, we, we really appreciate uh, Jill uh, speaking to us uh, a little bit uh, uh, earlier on uh, this week. 
Oh, I'm getting a bit of feedback uh, from someone uh, over there. I'm just, uh, just. Mm. Okay. It's it's not me, but yeah, I can, I can hear a bit of a feedback. A little bit of feedback just came mm. in at the end of that. I'm just going to mark down the time at 34. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, just getting a little bit of feedback. Okay, uh, we'll we'll continue um, as we were. But some great words from Jill there about uh, how that uh, all um, uh, that that time and that, that watching Norman play. Um, it must have been just amazing to actually watch it. We were all seen footage of it uh, recently, but um, to be actually watch, be able to watch him live would have been spectacular. I think. Yeah, um, first and foremost, I felt quite emotional when listening to the words of Jill. Just, just talk about him there. Um, but I'm, there's, a, there's a story where he, <clears throat> what he says about simplifying the game. He says, my job were easy. I basically smashed the forward, which, <laughs> which he, nine times out of ten he would do. And then he says, then I just give it to either Billy Bremner or Johnny Giles. And you're just thinking, wow, that's, that's amazing. But he says it in such a simplistic way. You think, oh, surely you do a lot. How do you do that? But... The great players and the very, very top players make the game look easy, and, and, and that's what Norm did. Smash your centre-forward and then give it to your midfield players and your attacking players to go win you the game. So he's, uh, you, you could just say it wasn't about himself when he played as well. It was a team player. Mm. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, uh, he certainly was. Uh, well, let's hear from Burley Banksy then, Andy McVeigh, and uh, his thoughts after speaking to us about uh, Norman Hunter. Hi, it's Andy McVeigh. Um, I've been really taken by surprise how much Norman's death has, has upset me, actually. You know, I didn't know him personally that well, but I'd seen him at every game. And you always felt like you knew Norman. He had this kind of warmth about him that you felt like you knew him. So you... You know, your TV's missing or something. He's it, it, going to be a, a big, big loss. He's going to be a big hole in uh, the fabric of Ellen Road, I think. Um, I once sat behind Norman at the Yorkshire, at the West Yorkshire Playhouse to watch the Damned United, the play. Wow. And I was, I'd noticed he was sat right in front of me and we got to the bit where his character has been slagged off and effed and jeffed about by Brian Clough. And I looked at him to think, how's he going to take this? Because this must be quite surreal for him. And he was just laughing his head off, which I thought was really funny. And I had a chat with him afterwards about what was that like seeing somebody play you and get slagged off. And he went, ah, oh, it's in the past, man. And... And he just found it funny. So, you know, he, he was a very kind of jovial kind of guy like that, I think. And and uh, a true legend and we'll properly miss him. Yeah, uh, we certainly will. There's no doubt about that. We will certainly uh, miss uh, Norman Hunter um, uh, massively, I think. Um, there's no doubt at all. Um, that uh, he's going to he's going to have a huge impact on uh, the the club itself. There was a, a few things that I noticed as well, um, which was um, I spoke to uh, Michael Waydock a long time ago when he was working with um, uh, uh, Norman Hunter because he used to do the uh, co commentary on uh, Yorkshire Radio right back in the day, um, and um, I, I they used to have a few people doing the co commentary with uh, Michael Waydock uh, at that point, and um, I always remember asking Wizzo um, who was your favourite person to be talking with and who's your favourite person to be co-commentating the, the one he always picked out uh, was Norman Hunter um, because he just said he was uh, uh, fantastic to talk to um, uh, so it was uh, it was really really uh, amazing um, to uh, hear from uh, hear from Wizzo on that um, uh, R Ryan um, there's been loads of different um, uh, people coming on to the uh, uh, the uh, feed today talking about their their memories of them and I'm just going to read uh, some of these out uh, this morning uh, Owen Greenwood uh, saying my childhood hero RIP Norman um, uh, it's um, uh, Hunter was a uh, superb servant a real legend that's a Leeds fan from Newport um, in Perth, beautiful Perth. Norman was such a lovely man, writes Chris. He says, I had the pleasure of playing a few rounds of golf with, golf with him before I moved to the other side of the world. Terrible news. And my thoughts go out to his family and friends. So lots of people uh, talking about uh, Norman. He's, he's, he's had a, a massive impact on this club. Oh, 100%. Um, he's, he's a legend in, in every sense of the word. And um it's just so fitting and, and such an amazing tribute that the amount of people that are getting in touch that have had the 
the, the the experience of meeting him obviously off the, off the pitch and and he has time for everybody and and that that makes that makes a big difference you know it's like ben says when it, when he was talking about norman <clears throat> if you meet one of your heroes and they're a bit of an, an idiot or the, or whatever then it's quite awful really because you kind of it kind of ruins it a bit for you but um whereas you know when somebody's nice to you even if they're not famous when somebody's nice to you you think oh that person's sound that's a really nice person but when it's a legend especially if you're a Leeds fan you're like no I don't know and he's nice like, like wow what a guy you know god put this person on on earth as a top bloke you know and um yeah I think it's really fitting that all I've not seen one bad word about him I mean obviously I, I wouldn't want to see that but he's he's just touched so many people in in the right way it's brilliant um people will just remember him forever yeah they certainly will there's no doubt about that uh he is going to be remembered for uh ever and ever um still to come uh we're going to be uh hearing from uh former Leeds united manager simon grayson he's on the way we're also going to be hearing uh from glenn snodden tony dorigo richard naylor neil redfern nigel martin jermaine beckford and also from eddie gray um all on the way uh, very shortly but uh, uh, a quick break now um and uh, we'll talk about uh, one of our uh, sponsors of course uh, for the ls11 podcast uh, which is the social maze and uh, we w- all work in organizations that advertise with the overall aim of course of gaining new business and uh, the social maze have uh, helped a number of organizations generate new business providing outstanding customer service of course um and uh, looking at their effective social Social media strategy. Um, if your place of work is not active on social media, ask the question why. Uh, it's one of the most powerful marketing tools at your employer's disposal. Many of us spending a significant amount of time browsing content on our mobile devices. The social maze work with all kinds of businesses and would love to help those who may not have the time, resource, or knowledge to effectively use social media to its full potential. Take a look at their website at the socialmaze.co.uk or you can email them info at the social maze.co.uk to find out more information this is ls11 uh, you listen to LS11. It's our uh, Norman Hunter tribute for you uh, this morning. I hope you're enjoying it. Do get in contact um, with your comments. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you want to run through some of the comments um, uh, from uh, listeners that we've uh, had in this morning. Loads of comments coming in. Loads of people watching, of course, we're streaming live on on Facebook and YouTube this morning. Um, what are they saying, Ryan? Yeah, it's, it's quite obviously a lot paying superb tribute to, to Norman. Um, there's one here, uh, Paul Egan, statue of Norman. Um, obviously, there's the the statue of Billy, and we, we've got Don um, there as well. Um, I think I don't know if it's fully complete yet, but at the doing, uh, is there more work to be done where the centenary pavilion is? Ben, do, do you know much about that? Because the, and they put some kind of tributes to, to, to people there. Um, I'm not too sure. Um, obviously, obviously the of the um, the players who've obviously played for the club are all on the um, the like the centenary of Can Honours board, but um, I'm not too sure. And in terms of a tribute, look, <laughs> you can go down any route you want. Name, name a stand mm. uh, for for not. He's already got a suite with it within, but that that's just um, nowhere near for for the for the man and what he did for the club. So. I think it's got to be a stand, a, isn't it? A, a stand, um, or a stand or a statue could only be something going to uh, on the on the right path because, um, like I said, for, for the the amount of games that he played as well, and listening, there were a piece that um, LUTV put out about um, Eddie Gray and Peter Lorimer was speaking about him. He ne- he, they always say he never seemed to be injured. The gate amount of games it, t- it turned out. Um, it'd probably be had a knock on a Thursday. His ankle would be like a balloon. It'd be like not a chance he's playing on a Saturday. But come three o'clock, who was out there smashing people? Norman Hunter. So is <laughs> um, it just epitomises what the the badge is about for 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 for, for us uh, as Leeds fans? Mm. Um, just just truly a great man. And whatever the club do, I'm sure it'll be be fitting for for him. 
Yeah, definitely. Like like the the comment up at the moment um, for people listening to the audio. Um, Milo Dent says thoughts on the South Stand being named the Norman Hunter Stand. I think um, Stand tributes are, are, are superb, and um, if anybody deserves a, a tribute like that, I think certainly Norman Hunter is is up there. Uh, well, let's hear more from uh, some fans, of course, uh, on Norman Hunter. And we caught up with uh, one fan, Keith Ingham, lifelong uh, Leeds United fan, and his thoughts on Norman Hunter. My mem- memories of Norman are pretty good. Uh, I started watching him in 1973-74 season, part of the, uh, the Revis side that won the championship. And saw him until he left. And when I went into Bristol, say, I had the opportunity to meet him when I started with my blog site, We All Love Leeds, to uh, go in the press room. And Norman was always there. And the first time I met him was in the Sydney Centenary Pavilion. He put out his hand and said, how are you doing, lad? And we talked about football and what Leeds were doing right and what would Leeds were doing wrong. He signed my shirt and sent me on my way with a nice smile and a moment I'll never, ever forget. I've met him a few times since there when going in press box and been around Ellen Road. I've got to say, he was probably the nicest guy I've ever met in Ellen Road. And by God, I cried on Friday when I heard the news. Goodbye, Norman, a legend. In every way. That's uh, Keith Ingham talking about uh, Norman Hunter. Um, and it, uh, we, we keep reiterating it, but it has had a, a, a massive effect um, uh, around the, the, the whole club. Um, we're going to be hearing from uh, Eddie Gray. Uh, I spoke to him a few ga- days ago. We can hear from him uh, in, a, in a little while. And of course, uh, the Leeds United uh, manager as well, uh, Simon Grayson, um, is uh, we call former Leeds United manager, of course. Uh, but uh, first, let's, uh, let's hear as well from the uh, Leeds United Supporters Trust. Pete Emerson um, has uh, been chatting to us about uh, um, the impact of Norman Hunter on Leeds United. This is Peter Emerson of the Leeds United Supporters Trust and I just want to start by offering all of the Trust's condolences to Norman's family, his friends and his former teammates. Norman is a, a Leeds United icon, he's a legend, he's a, he's a hero there's so many titles that you can accredit to Norman because of his heroics for Leeds. And on the board, we have so many people that were lucky enough to see him play. There was some people that grew up listening to him on BBC Radio over Leeds, of his analysis of, of the game, and then those who have seen him around the club as a, as a legend. And what's nice this weekend to, to hear, as we've all spoken about, is so many different memories of the different eras that connect us to Norman. And one thing was very clear was the amount of love, the amount of respect that everyone has for for him. It was also great to see in the media, the national media, um, how they regaled about him being such a great footballer and didn't just keep on with the moniker of Norman bites your legs, spoke about the amount of games he played for Leeds, the caps he won for England, the trophies that he won. And it was nice to see on the national stage people remembering Norman for the player that he was and the man that he he was. Um, He embodied what it is to be Leeds. And the Leeds United history is is richer because Norman Hunter was a part of it. And this weekend, it just feels like we've lost a little bit of magic. And um, there's never going to be another another Norman Hunter at the football club or probably even in the game. And um, we will miss him ever so much. He was an absolute gentleman and an icon. Uh, thanks very much to uh, Pete Emerson uh, for chatting to us on uh, LS11 from the uh, Leeds United uh, Supporters Trust. Um, we're going to be hearing from Norman Hunter himself uh, very shortly. Uh, but I just thought I'd just uh, um, uh, bring this to your attention, guys. I just I saw this. There was a load of stuff 
on uh, social media uh, last week. But there was this one story that I saw. And, you know, sometimes with social media, you're not too sure about how true these stories are. But this one I absolutely loved about uh, Norman Hunter. Um, great story about Norman Hunter told by Tommy Doherty. Um, as the Manchester United coach pulled into Ellen Road, it stopped. And before anybody could get off, Norman Hunter got, got on and he went straight up to Dennis Law and handed him a piece of paper. Uh, never said a word and then just got back off the coach. Now, in the dressing room, Doherty said to Law, what was the piece of paper? And Law turned around and said it was the menu for the evening meal at Lee's General Infirmary. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you see these things on social media, but you just sort of like, I really hope that's true uh, because that is absolute class if that was. Uh, ben, have you ever given someone a menu from uh, LGI before a game? Well, um, funny enough, I've racked a few menus up from hospitals in my time due to the amount of operations I've had. Not not, not had one at LGI, so um, I, don't, I don't really want to try the menu from there, but the... Um, the um, the Yorkshire Clinic Bingley that's a very good menu from the hospital there. So if you have, if you need um, some surgery to a hip or whatever, try and go to Yorkshire Clinic. Good good food. <laughs> good food. All right, I'll try to remember that. I'll try. I remember. mean, th those were the days, weren't they, when you could just get on a scene bus and and do that. Imagine trying to do that now. They'd be just outrage and it'd be probably all over press and you yeah. know in, in bad ways and stuff but um you know i hope i really hope that did happen and it probably did you know uh, back in them days a bit of uh, intimidation tactics probably brilliant um now this next clip we're going to hear we're going to hear from norman hunter and do you want to set this one up because this is andy hughes and he was sort of like chatting to to norman on uh, on a match day wasn't he yeah, that's right. Um, Andy Hughes comes back to to Ellen Road every so often. To I think he does a bit of co-coms now now and again. And um, I think this was was at the Huddersfield game because I bumped into Andy at the game and had a little chat with him. And um, and he put this on his social media not long after Norman had passed away. And um, it's a video clip of him talking to Norman Hunter uh, in the concourse um, at half time or before the game, something like that. And um, just asking him a bit about tactics and, and what he'd do passing the ball out from the back. And, and, and he films Norman answering the question. And it's brilliant, really. Obviously, Norman and, and Andy Hughes are um, probably met each other on a few occasions, obviously, Andy playing for the club and, and everything. And it, it, it was just a really good little video. And obviously, he's mentioning. Billy Bremner and these classic players like that. He's absolutely superb and and he's got a big smile on his face and um Andy's having a bit of a laugh about it. Um I I spoke to Andy the other day and asked if I could use it on this and he went, yeah. And he's, he's, he said, Yeah, for sure, mate, no problem. He said, the more people see it, the better. We wanna we wanna show everybody what type of what the type of guy Norman Hunter is. And so yeah, this is uh, the, the audio clip. We will put the video clip out after on on youtube we are making a, a bit of a video of all this t together as a tribute video to norman hunter um so you'll be able to see the actual video um probably tomorrow or the day after okay here we go oh, playing forward what did you used to do well when i used to get the ball my first reaction was either johnny giles billy bramner and then if they were marked i'd turn it onto my left foot alan clark Mick Jones, dink it into them in, on the chest. Easy as that, Norm. It's as easy as that. <laughs> Makes it sound so easy. Makes it sound so easy, doesn't he, really? Uh, oh, just look up. Yeah, I'll just dink it to them. Yeah, fine. No worries. All right. Was it that easy, Ben? Um, so make, make it look easier than others, to be honest. <laughs> uh, ben, as a left-back, would you... Uh, like to to have a Norman on uh, at the side of you as a centre half. I think I'd still be playing if Norman were a side of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah. it's it's all all you want is um as a left back the centre half at side of you. You don't want to worry about his game. You don't want to be nervous um, thinking what's he going to do in possession out of possession um his positional side of the game and. With with great players like that, it just makes you concentrate on your own game. And let, let's be honest, any, any ball in the air, he'd come and win. Um, a strike wants to go short, he'd go short with him and smash him in behind. He, um, he wouldn't get caught out of position. And um, again, I've heard Eddie Gray speak about, he said, um, Norman, he wasn't the quickest of players, or he wasn't the most mobile of players. 
but he never got caught out positional in positional side of the game. And that and that and that's what good players do. You don't you don't have to be rapid. You just got to be um, clever, know where to be. And <clears throat> look, he, he wouldn't have been in that nineteen sixty six World Cup squad if he wasn't um, if he wasn't a very 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 top player. Um, mm. and, and that just shows what uh, there's only twenty two people who've got a, a, a World Cup winners medal from from England, and to be one of those twenty two just shows what type of player he actually was. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Just had a message coming here from uh, James Wallace. It's who's uh, contributed to LS Eleven. Um, the graphic for okay. hi James. The graphic for the Norman Hunter tribute was uh, done by James. He does a few graphics for us. Um, nice lad, superb lad, big bleeds fan, very and talented. Uh, very talented. Yep, and uh, quite quite a good question this morning. Uh, morning, lads. I think. If they move the training complex to Ellen Road, they should name it after Norman. It would be apt for the amount of hard work he's, he, that he went through for the club. Now, obviously, there's a lot of talk about the training facilities being moved to just a, a site pretty much next to Ellen Road. Um, I think that'd be a good idea, James. Um, you don't really, you don't, you, I, 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 I could be wrong, but I don't really hear if training grounds ever really been named after somebody, but somebody like. Norman Hunter, who came to Leeds United at 15 years old, yeah. played for played 700 games for the club, 14 years service, but then also came back and he was coaching young players, bringing people through. Then he was broadcasting um, on behalf of Leeds United for Leeds United. You know, everything he's done for the club, it be. I think it's a, a really good idea. Uh, if they can't name a stand or build a statue, I think that is a really good idea because... I like that. I like that, that yeah, like Leeds United Training Ground being called the Norman Hunter Academy or facility or whatever they name them nowadays. But being named after Norman, I think that's a, a very good call. Cheers, James. Thanks very much for that, James. Keep your comments coming in. We're live streaming on uh, Facebook and on YouTube uh, this morning. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the Athletic, a must for all football fans, especially Leeds United. The Athletic's bringing you the best coverage year club, world-class team of football writers, completely ad-free, no ads, no annoying pop-ups, and it's the new home of Phil Hay. And there was an article on Norman Hunter uh, that Phil's done um, on the Athletic last week that's really, really well worth a read um, because uh, don't remember Norman Hunter as a hard man. He was far more than that. Um, and I'll just read you a, a few little bits of this because it's absolutely uh, fantastic. For those of us in earshot, his voice was part of the soundtrack to games. Hunter would tear strips off players who deserve to be flayed and berate officials for their mistake uh, mistakes. He bounced to his feet as goals went in and had kittens whenever Leeds United played out dangerously tight positions at the back. Uh, the club's last match at home to Huddersfield uh, found him in usual form uh, and in, in quotes, looks like we're getting there, boys, he said with a grin as they walked out after a 2-0 win. And he says there was two distinct sides to Norman. Um, he was a sweet-natured gentleman with the broadest of smiles, a twinkle in his eye and a distinctive laugh. He would breeze through the press box at Ellen Road saying hello with handshakes, shoulder squeezes, little jokes, but, but put a ball in front of him and Hunter was ready to play, play hard and play to win. Alan Mur Mullery, the former Tottenham Hotspur midfielder, said his left foot was just like him. You couldn't help but love it. You just didn't want to be on the end of it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think it's a really, really good article and you can get that article and much, much more with The Athletic, of course, as part of your subscription, uh, where fans of the podcast can now get 50% off the annual subscription price and a seven-day free trial. If you want to get that deal, all you need to do is head to theathletic.co.uk slash ls11 that's the athletic.co.uk slash ls11 this is ls11 Right, well, we're going to be hearing from a former Leeds United manager now, uh, Simon Grayson, and uh, just tell us a, a little bit about this uh, because you hooked up with him uh, a, a few days ago, uh, uh, Ryan. Yeah, um, uh, obviously, after Norman Hunter's passing, um, I thought over the weekend, I think LS11 should pay a little bit of tribute to, to Norman Hunter in the best way that we can. And um, I just started going through some of my contacts in my phone and spoke to Ben and Darren about what we should do and um sent out a few messages and to be honest we uh, the, the 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 people got back to me so quick you know fans who i know jill keith Bailey banksy and pete emerson at the trust but also some some of the players that, that i'm lucky enough to, to know and have the contacts for and 
to be honest with you, they all got back to me within minutes. There, there were a couple that I, unfortunately didn't get back to me. I uh, won't name names, but um, the the vast majority did. And um, Simon Grayson, uh, I've known him for a few years now, and a pal of mine, and he got back straight away and said, yeah, sure, when, when do you want to do something? I, and I just said, you know, send a voice note over or something like that, you know, of, of your thoughts and, uh, you know, everything you think about Norman Hunter and what it means to you. And then um, you're like, yeah, yeah. I said, you know what? I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a, a Skype call. Essentially, um, it's kind of what we used to to do this service. And um, and we ended up chatting for about ten minutes about Norman Hunter, um, oh. which which we could have gone on. To be honest with you, this tribute could go on all night. There's that much, and I could have spoke to Simon for hours. But obviously, we are trying to get it, the show in with as many voices as we can. So unfortunately, we can't go on. Um, for as long as we'd want to do but uh, yeah i had a, a 10 minute chat with, with simon and um and it, it it was it was superb and some nice stories about norman okay so uh hopefully technology works and here we go you're going to be hearing from simon grayson next and, and manager, manager simon, simon grayson. grayson simon, simon how, how are you doing, doing? Thanks, thanks for joining us. us hi right yeah not too bad thank you uh how's lockdown going for you at the moment yeah, like everybody, really, not easy. Um, trying to keep busy doing different things around the house, a bit of exercising out on my bike and other bits and bobs. Um, probably eating too much, drinking too much. But, um, yeah, trying to stay healthy, trying to stay involved with people, uh, trying to keep busy. And, and hopefully we can come through this very quickly um, and everybody can be as safe and sound in the meantime. And hopefully, as I said, we can get through this quicker. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, Simon, sadly, on Friday, we, we learned uh, the news that Leeds legend Norman Hunter had sadly passed away. Obviously, as a, as a former player and manager, you, you've you spent time with Norman and got to know him on a personal level. Uh, level. How, how did that, how did this affect you and, and your thoughts on Norman? Yeah, it was devastating, really. Um, the, the news, obviously, that was in hospital the week before was a, was a shock threat to everybody, really. Um and then on Friday, when the news came through, it was it was des- devastating for uh, for people who knew him, for Leeds United supporters who maybe watched him, um, or, or not even watched him. He was just the icon of of Leeds United, wasn't he? A hero, a legend, um, and it, and it was it's really tough because I've known Norman a long time, um, and um, when something like this happens to somebody, you know, it, it really hits home, and um, so sad for for Norman's family, his wife and children grandchildren and he'll be sorely missed 100 percent. And, and like you say when when it's somebody you, you know or or admire like you know obviously I, I were lucky enough to meet norman on a couple of occasions but i can't exactly say you know we're really close to him but um even so it, it's it's affected me quite a lot i were, I were devastated when i heard the news um so simon so t- tell us how, we, how when when you first met norman what it was like as a person you know when you were coming through the ranks at Leeds United and 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 as a manager as well um, years down the line. Yeah, um, I was probably too young to really watch Norman play. But obviously, you watch the clips over over the last few years of how he played, um, how how we tackled, how we how we caught up in in brawls and punching Franny Lee. That's a fantastic <laughs> sort of episode, which I'm sure won't <laughs> won't get away with that today. Um, <laughs> And it goes back a long way, really, since I was 17, Prentice at Leeds when Billy Bremner was a manager. Um, and Norman, I think, had left somewhere as a manager and he came on to Billy's staff, not full-time, but just did it a few days. He joined in um, taking training. But then he'd also join in, in the sessions as well. We'd do like five asides and he'd still kick us 17, 18-year-olds, like lumps <laughs> out of us. As if, and, and, and Norman would have been, I don't know what, he'll have been... Uh, in his 50s, late 40s by then, but he still had that desire and that sort of fire in his belly that if somebody got past them, you know you're getting the next one, you're, you're getting uh, the full force of the Norman bites your leg tackle. Um, and what was really sort of a really nice thing for me as a young kid at the time was that I used to do the um, the coach's room, clean it out, clean the boots, get the, gather all the kit in. And it was a job that sort of didn't take too long to do, but I used to make sure that it it lasted a lot longer because you could. I was doing my jobs, and Billy and Norman and other people that were in there would be talking amongst themselves, but also then bringing me into the conversations. And it was like mesmerising listening to the stories of what they used to do, how how they were, and 
and it was just fantastic to sort of sample what it was like to be part of the the golden generation of Leeds United and Norman obviously played a massive part of that um so got that's that's obviously what 30 odd years ago since since yeah. that happened and uh, it only seems like yesterday and then obviously I was lucky enough to come back as a manager and Norman was obviously around the ground showing doing all his hospitality stuff uh, doing the radio I think before that as well and he's, he was just an absolute gentleman people talk about him being this warrior on the pitch which he certainly was you can never take that away from him but the other side of him was completely contrasted he was sort of the most gentle person most humble person would do anything for anybody um, and I was again loved being in his company he'd play my golf days um, at the drop of a hat or, or just at any time pick up the call to a call to him talk to him but when I used to in the last year or so go back to Ellen Road to do my major work he's just an unbelievable person or he was an, an unbelievable person and uh, he will be sorely missed as we mentioned before because of of the status that he's had at Leeds United but mainly as the person that he was that he'd have time for anybody and uh, it's going to be a massive void for a lot of people and hopefully this is going to be a special year that Leeds United can get promoted back to the Premier League and it can be for Norman and, and many other of the greats that have, are not around at this moment in time. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, we, we've lost a, a couple of those greats. And I tell you what, there'll be a good party up in the sky with them guys, you know, Norman Hunter, Billy Bremner, Maidley. They'll, they'll be all up there with, with, with a gaffer as well, Don Revit. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a sad thought that they're not with us today, but it's a happy thought thinking they're all together having good chats and good catch-ups. Uh, Simon, you, you were a defender throughout your career, um, primarily. Um, so you, I, I know you said you didn't really watch Norman, but that kind of passion, the aggressiveness and stuff, did, did any of that ever rub off on you as a Leeds United fan as well? You know, hearing about the legends and obviously <laughs> being in training, getting kicked, kicked lumps out of you by, by Norman. Did that... Well, 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 if you had Norman kicking you in training as a 17-year-old kid, you knew you had to look after yourself in the next time. But you either let him have it or you just pulled back a little bit and uh, and jumped or, or jumped out the way of a tackle. And it, <laughs> he, he was there to... But it was a lesson for us, you know what I mean? That you were young and you had to look after yourselves. It's, it's you against the opposition who you're playing against. And as long as you do it correctly and you don't go out to deliberately hurt somebody, which back in the 70s and 60s, there was certainly doing both, I think, so from the clips. And and in, and you, they did have to look after themselves. But I think people don't give Norman the credit um, that he deserves, um, how good he was as a player. Over mm. the years, talking to him, talking to Billy, talking to Paul Reaney and all other legends of, of Leeds United through uh, Don Revy's time, he could play. He could he could play in this day and age and look, not look out of place where you're talking about centre-ass, handling the ball, bringing it out. And he would always really... Um, underplay it himself because you still I still remember telling me he says all I would do was if I, if I didn't have a pass on well sorry when I got the ball the first part of call was to look for Brenner and Giles who, who were far better players than me and if they were marked they'd play up to Clark and, and or Jones mm. but he, he would step in he could play in this modern day he, he would have adapted to it all yeah. and you don't play the number of games for Leeds United without being good on the ball and mm. I think he's been he was very unfortunate not to have played many, many more times and even have a World Cup medal as in from the start in 11 if it wasn't being for uh, two absolute world-class defenders in uh, Big Jack and uh, Sir Bobby Moore. Exactly, exactly. I mean, a lot of people do, a lot of people actually say it was very unfortunate not to be in that starting 11 in, in the, the World Cup squad, but obviously that World Cup squad, you know, Bobby Moore, Jack Charles and super players. Um, um, but I think he was quite, from what I've read and seen, he was quite influential behind the scenes, you know, with his experience and, and the type of person he was. I think he got on like an house on fire of a lot of people there. Um Simon, when you were the manager at the club, did, did he's a very passionate guy. Did he ever come up to you behind the scenes and go, oh, just, you know, should be doing this or should be doing that? Did he ever try and get involved in anything like that? No, I don't think he ever tried to tell me what to do. Um, but he but he certainly was passionate about the club and he'd be, he'd be absolutely buzzing when we won games, as disappointed as anybody when we lost games. But he was very passionate, as you mentioned. And... The promotion day against Bristol Rovers, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure he'd be part like everybody was, and mm. uh, 
as excited and as, as nervous as everybody was at that moment in time. But it was just great to have around the place the aura that when he walked down the corridor with some of the other lads of that era, that generation, it was just, it made you want to talk to them because of what they had in the locker. You could, you could ask for, I would ask advice for them at times. Um, not that it would last for too long, but just little clips of what do you think today, lads, and stuff like that. And they'd give you a good, honest opinion. And, and that's why they've they've held in high regard and they've still yeah. obviously up to recently Norman was still doing the lounges, talking a good game before the game half time, very knowledgeable. Mm. And even up to uh, like I said last year when I was doing my media work, he was we were talking on the gantry, talking about the game and uh, you you've you you said to me more than anybody, you could feel him kicking every ball under mm. under the table and so wonder the gantry didn't go through if Norman's trying to kick anything <laughs> up there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're very lively up there. We're well, uh, like I said to you earlier before we started this, I, I used to sit um, next to him for the first half of this season, and um, it, it was an honour to be honest with you. Um, such a, a lovely fella. Um, his knowledge, his passion, it was just incredible. It, it was inspiring, um, absolutely inspiring. Um, Simon, it's, it's been superb. Th- thank you for for joining joining us and and sharing your thoughts on on the legend Norman Hunter. Ellen Road, Leeds United is not going to be the same without him, hundred percent sure. Um, but thanks for for joining us, and it were great to hear some of your stories. No worries. Let's hopefully let's be hopeful that this is the year for promotion for back to the Premier League where the club deserves. And as I said earlier, it'd be fantastic if it was this year, given what's happened to Norman and, and some of the other greats. They'd be looking down. Um, and if there's a tackle to be made in the last minute of the game to get promotion, I'm pretty sure the Leeds United player will make that tackle because Norman will be looking down on them. So uh, that's for the invite. Good luck and we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, cheers, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, Simon Grayson there talking to us uh, on LS11 and uh, some fantastic words there. And um, uh, it, uh, the impact we've talked about the impact of uh, Norman has on uh, all players, but again, on, on the manager himself, it had an amazing impact, Ryan. Yeah, I think um, one of the things with Simon Grayson is, first and foremost, he's a Legion Knight fan. He was... Um, Born and raised in North Yorkshire and uh, part of North Yorkshire, where I think they tend to be um, Leeds United fans. That were kind of the closest, big, biggest team. And um, so, obviously, like you said, there he's not. He didn't really grow up watching him play, which you know neither did I. But you know, his his father, his probably his friends, his his, his older, you know, family members, peers, whatever. They, they, they'll have all seen it, and and everybody knows Norman Hunter. You know, like my eras kind of the 90s and the noughties really and I knew I've always known about Norman Hunter just from being a big Leeds fan and, and from a big Leeds United family um, but yeah some really nice stories like when Simon were first uh, um, uh, away tees I want to call them what I used to call them them young like academy players oh, yeah. is gone and um, you know saying he, he were cleaning Billy's boots and taking his time to clean them because Billy and Norman Hunter would be chatting about stories and you know, can you imagine that? You know, as being like a young player coming through an academy and two complete legends of the club are, are talking about past days or, or or whatever. It's incredible. And and um obviously Simon, you know, were lucky enough to, to to manage the club and came back years later and and Norman was always about and yeah, he just had nothing but nice words to say about him and um like I said, when I when I put the the feelers out to to get contributions to to this, Simon, one of the first that, that came back. Yeah, good to hear from Simon Grayson. Uh, some of your comments coming through over to a streaming on Facebook and on YouTube this morning. Wayne, three words that describe Norman, pride, passion and heart. Real legend and will be sadly missed by all of us in the Leeds family. Uh, RIP Norman. Uh, Johnny Brown, everybody knows of Johnny Brown. Uh, morning, chaps. Good to see you all looking well, especially Mr. Groomed, Ben there. Um, it says, on Norman Hunter, this was a tough one to take. He had the pleasure of meeting him at Ellen Road a couple of years ago, and he couldn't be more pleasant. And it was uh, me who actually had to say, I've got to go, as I w- he would have taught for ages. I had a train to catch. Lovely bloke. Uh, let's do it for him now. Um, so just some of your um, uh, messages there. And Ryan saying, goosebumps, uh, still listening uh, there to Simon Grayson. He's still leads. Um, 
no no doubt about that. Yeah, he is still definitely Leeds. Um, and uh, well, we'll hear more, I'm sure, uh, from Simon Grayson uh, as we uh, as we go on. Let's hear some uh, more though uh, from uh, our uh, people that we've got in contact with, and uh, someone that Simon Grayson uh, knew very very well indeed, of course, uh, which is Glenn Snodden, um, who's been uh, talking to us here at uh, LS11 and giving us uh, his thoughts on Norman Hunter. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and the supporters of Leeds United around the world. It's Snod's here, Glyn Snowden. First of all, my condolences to Norman's family. God bless you all. Just like to say that how sad it is that we can't pay our respects in the right way to Norman and his family with what's happening in the world today. I was one of the lucky ones that got a chance to watch Norman play, get coached by him when he was with the gaffer, Billy Bremner, and also to meet and greet with him last season on a couple of games at Ellen Road in his suite. Not only was Norman one of the great players for Leeds United in England, but he was a winner and a true gentleman. He would give anyone, he would give every, anyone and everyone his time and his love for football and especially his love for Leeds United. We're all going to miss this great man. Norman, rest in peace, and we will remember you forever in our hearts, my friend. Uh, some lovely words there from, uh, of course, uh, Snods, uh, someone you know uh, very well as well, uh, Ben. And um, and he's right about that. And, and, and we've heard this from a fair, fair few people, haven't we, Ben, about you know, just the amount of time that uh, uh, Glynn's, uh, that uh, Norman Hunter would give to everybody, um, you know, and, and, and just talk to you. And, it just, and you're just a, such a lovely chap. It epitomises um, where Johnny Brown sent that message in just then about he was the one having to tell Norman, I've got to go, because Norman could have spent hours and hours ch chatting to him. And like I said, there's uh, we come across people um, I've done in, in football who've um, had, had great careers and they won't give you the time of the day. They won't even say hello to you. They'd ignore you. But um, it, Norman had time for everybody and anybody. And to me, that's that sum, sums him up as as a man, because yeah, for we we all love him because what he did on the pitch um, as fans, that's that's what you see. But the people who've been lucky enough to to work with him, meet with him, um, again, I'm not going to sit here and say I, I I knew Norman because I didn't I didn't I didn't know the guy. But what I can say is the the amount of times I did meet with him and chat with him, he. Um, it, it was like um, I would I were a teammate of his back in the seventies. The way he gave me the time, so it's just um, it's just it's just it's just great listening to all these things. It's great listening to the gaffer um, snods there come on as well because when they when they came into the club, um, obviously been players as well. They knew the history. They knew about Norman. Uh, <laughs> they've got the bruises to to call upon in, in training from Norman. But I'm I'm, pr I'm pretty sure after games at Ellen Road. They'd have, they've gone up to Norman and said, oh, what do you think about today? And um, it'd give him an honest opinion. And I think that's what makes it so special. It's um, once you lead, you're always leads, as the saying goes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, someone else who's always leads is, uh, of course, the uh, former player, and that is Tony Dorigo. He's caught up with us here at LS11 to give his thoughts on Norman Hunter. The great Norman Hunter. Uh, where do I start? I think if you look from a, a fan's perspective, Norman played over 700 games for Leeds United, uh, late 60s and 70s. The the team won, you know, so many trophies and put Leeds on the footballing map internationally, not just in the UK. Um, Norman was also voted the first PFA Player of the Year, so his peers voted him the best player that season. That is, you know, one incredible accolade. And of course, he was part of the uh, England and the World Cup, you know, winning squad as well. But uh, I think, from a footballing perspective, there's no doubt that that Norman and that era, you know, f allowed the likes of, of my team and the the team that went to so far in the European Cup and the present day. You know, all of us followed and had the the fruits, I suppose, of of those great players and those. You know, great occasions where they took leads to the you know the very heights of of winning trophies 
uh, I think on the footballing side, you know, that's certainly one thing. He, he was a you know a centre half outstanding, and yes, the old bite your legs moniker that that stuck. But there was so much more uh, to Norman Hunter. He really was a great player, but he had you know a great appetite uh, for the game. His attitude was you know was was wonderful and infectious on those around him. But for me. There's always two parts, and I'm very fortunate to have got to know the other part, and that's the man himself. Uh, when I was first playing at Leeds, you know, he was uh, always there, but in the background, you know, watching uh, and giving you know the team support, um, which you know is, is wonderful because even then you look up to those players, as we always did, as we do now, and as we certainly always will, especially in Norman's case, um, but. Then, as I came back to the club and do more um, on match days and, and other things around the club, you know, I come across Norman a, a lot more. So the last two, three years, got to know him, uh, you know, a lot better. And uh, we ended up working together and I um, was delighted to be able to share the stage with him in the Norman Hunter suite on most match days, uh, you know, just chatting about what we both love. And, you know, still uh, at 76 years of age, you know, he had the enthusiasm, the appetite, and the knowledge, of course, uh, to talk about his, his favourite pastime, which is football. And it was wonderful to, to get to know him. And what I do know, what I can tell everyone is that, you know, a better gentleman you will never meet. It's as simple as that. He was a, a wonderful man. He had time for everyone and everything. Doesn't matter who you were, uh, you know, from the, the, the youngest of fans to the 80-year-old to the that had followed Leeds, you know, throughout his life to the players, to the managers, to whoever you were, it didn't matter. Norman always had a friendly word uh, with you. And uh, i got to say, uh, I will certainly miss him. There'll be so many people uh, that will miss him. Um, I thought certainly to his his family and all his friends, but uh, heaven has got a good in there. He's a, a great man. And Norman, we're all going to miss you, mate. Tony Dorigo uh, joining us on uh, LS11 to talk about uh, Norman Hunter um, and uh, obviously the impact uh, he's going to have. Still to come, we're going to be hearing from uh, Eddie Gray, uh, Norman's teammate, of course, and uh, also uh, Jermaine Beckford, Nigel Martin and uh, Neil Redfern. Um, uh, loads of people getting in contact with us over the, the last uh, couple of, uh, well, the last week or so uh, since we've lost, of course, uh, 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 Norman. Um, uh, so, some uh, keep your uh, memories of Norman coming in. Frank Machen on uh, YouTube saying, I love those Riviera blokes. I love Norman. And this is a thing, isn't it? Um, Ryan, I'll come to you on this because. Um, those that those Reevy legends, uh, the Eddies, the Normans, the Peter Lorimers, um, you know, we, we, we'll never see the like of those again at all. I think that that's that's the difference between sort of like the the players of that era and the players of now. You're never going to meet people like that again. No, um, football's changed in, in such a way where um, it's going to be difficult for, for to even generate players like that. And what I mean by that is, you look at the modern day, you look at Calvin Phillips. Leeds lad, Leeds born, come through the the, the youth system, the academy. Um, he's been probably our best player this season, or if not one of them at very least. Um, but then now you're going to be having richer, bigger clubs looking to cherry pick from smaller teams in the championship, etc. And it's going to be very difficult for somebody like Calvin to not play for the club um, if Leeds don't get into the to, to the Premier League. Um Whereas back then you'd have players like, you know, your Eddie Gray's and Norman Hunter's coming through at 15 year old. You know, it must have been such an eye opener. You know, um, Norman came from the North East. Eddie obviously came from Scotland and, it, you know, dropping down into Leeds. And, you know, there weren't no many people and things like that. Um, but then you had great people looking after them. And, um, yeah, long gone are the days like that. And what I really liked about what Tony Dorigo just said there was, Players like Norman Hunter and, and that and that era team, they've paved the way for for the future Leeds United. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, from them being such greats and legends, every player that's put that shirt on for Leeds United ever since has always had that in the back of their mind, the history, um, the what what that Leeds United team achieved, and it's kind of it, it, it did put Leeds United on the world map. You know, yeah. we we were winning competitions in Europe. We were we won FA we won the FA Cup. We, we were winning leagues. You know. It's it's 
to turn Leeds United into a, a big club, you know, regardless of us a few years back dropping down into League One and, you know, going into administration and everything like that. You cannot take away that history. And um, just quite really interesting to to hear Tony say that, you know, when he played for Leeds, he kind of essentially paved the way for for, for him. And, and obviously he won, he won the league with Leeds United, you know, in the early 90s. So um, some really nice words uh, by Tony. Uh, ben, just a quick question. When you were um, playing... Obviously, you're you're a Leeds fan and, and everything anyway. But did did you feel like when you put that Leeds shirt on that you had this almost responsibility, you know, for what Leeds what what's expected to be a Leeds United player? A hundred percent, and that that comes from the likes of Norman, who was still around the club. You didn't really you didn't really see much uh, of Norman when 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 I was playing. Um, I was more Eddie Gray, but I knew Eddie Gray from age of about 13, 14 by playing with uh, one of his sons. So, um, and like I said, for, for me it was easy because I I've grown up been a been a massive Leeds fan all my life, so I knew the history by putting on the badge. But then you'd have managers like the uh, um, the gaffer um, Simon Grace, and it it tell about the history, what it meant to to wear the shirt, wear the badge, what it meant to the fans. And yeah, it, it does mean more being a fan growing up, loving the club. Um, it does make you try that little bit harder. But the players who'd come in, um, who'd been signed, who hadn't been the Leeds fan, didn't know much too much about the club. Within um, <laughs> within moments, you, you, they soon realised what it actually meant and the history, and everything surrounded it. By and look, first 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 thing you have to do is give hundred percent and. These you're speaking about great great players here in from from the seventies, which put the club on the map, and I'm sure if every fan who went to watch the games at that time, they'd come away from the ground. Yeah, they're great players. They've got great ability, but every fan would say about them, oh, they gave hundred percent today. They give everything. They left everything out on the pitch, and if, if you do that mixed with their ability, that's that's why you win the trophies. Not only in this country but abroad as well. What what they did do, and it leaves a legacy. So. If these greats of the game, the greats of our club, can give hundred percent, why can't everybody else? So that that that's what you that's what you should be tr- trying to strive towards. And to be f- to be fair, if you want to go to this day and age, the players that's what you see in our players now. They give hundred percent. Yeah, sometimes they don't work out, and you might lose a game here and there. But as a fan's point of view, all you want to see is a player give hundred hundred percent, and that's what um, Norman Hunter and rest of the Revy boys did. Mm. Well, listen about from someone else who always gave 100% talking about uh, his thoughts and memories of Norman Hunt, and that's the former captain, uh, Richard Naylor. I'm good to hear about the passing of Norman. I uh, met him on several occasions, and there's something of an aura about him. Obviously, a proper legend. Uh, I think playing for Leeds, uh, you sort of look back to that side in that era of being the benchmark of you know where the club should be, and him being about the place was just fantastic. He was always really supportive, really positive uh, to myself and to the team when I was a player. Uh, and, and again, as a coach, I was lucky enough to meet him on you know numerous numerous occasions, and he was always you know really friendly. Had enough time for everyone. Wanted to talk about football and about his days. So you know, for me as a player, just having him about was was special, really, because as a Leeds fan, you know, he's, he's a proper legend. So really gutted. Uh, just want to pass on my best wishes to his his friends, his family, and everyone who knew him. Because uh, he was a, a great guy and obviously an unbelievable player. Be missed. Certainly will be missed. Richard Naylor talking to us on LS11. Uh, thank you so much for all your your comments uh, coming in uh, this morning. Uh, Bobby Joyce has uh, said, lucky to have seen Norman play and hear his stories at after dinner and special events. Accidentally, actually, accidentally overheard him reading through his notes in an offstage toilet cubicle before a talk, even though he had done them for years. Made me smile to myself. He was a perfectionist and a model off the field for the club too. Uh, meeting Norman a few times is something I treasure. Uh, lived leads uh, MOT. Thanks for uh, that, Bobby. And uh, um, also from Big Mally on YouTube, being a first aider for five 
five years at the top of the West Stand. I met Norman every other week. The memories will live with me forever. RIP Norman, you will always be remembered. Um, so some um, amazing comments coming through from you guys um, on the, and keep them coming. We'll get through as many as we can uh, through this very special LS11 uh, Norman Hunter tribute. Um, but uh, let's hear it now uh, from uh, well, former Leeds United manager. Um, it's uh, Redders, Neil Redfern, giving us uh, his thoughts. Morning, um, Neil Redfern here. Yeah, I'd just like to pay uh, my tributes to, to the late Norman Hunter and um, how much of an influence he was on me and, and how I thought and how I was, particularly as a young person growing up and a young footballer growing up, um, watching that great Don, Don Revy side uh, on a Saturday afternoon with, with my father. Um, and then right to the other end of the spectrum when, um, obviously, um, I got the manager's job at Leeds United and, and Norman was, was a great source of experience and knowledge to go to at a time when um, we needed everybody to pull together um, to, to get us out of the, the, the problems that we had. Um, and I'll never forget Norman for his kindness and, and strength and his wisdom in, in, that, in them times. So Norman, you'll be sadly missed, but... You know, I just want to thank you for um, everything you've you've done and the influence you've had over me in my career. Thank you. Uh, no, that's uh, Neil Redfern there talking about uh, Norman Humphrey. And that's that's the thing, isn't it, Ben? And, and we've heard this uh, through quite a few of these uh, little clips that we've been hearing is the influence uh, that uh, not, I mean, Norman especially, but uh, that, that whole era of that Reaver generation, the influence they've had on, on players uh, coming through in the 80s and 90s and even players now as well because obviously their legend status. Exactly. And um, it's it's great uh, you, you're hearing from managers who've been managers of the club, Redders, um, Simon Grayson. They, those guys wanting to go out of their way to speak to likes of Norman Hunter to get his advice and just to talk about football in general. Um, and then the, the gaffer, Simon Grayson, he said he would have never been one to tell him what to do, about how to go about his job. But just to talk about football and... And, and why can't you be inspired by guys like Norman Hunter? And like, it's, it's just great. Again, that Redders there when um, saying came to the club as a coach um, for the in the youth team and got the job as a manager uh, the first team. Just just, just uh, wanting to go out and speak to Norman, just like pick his brain about little things. It's um, it's such a great um, a great great bit of clip with like um, and the the thing that you said, Ryan, about the players and well, the past players, the past managers, how quick they were to come and give. Wanted to give a little tribute. Just shows what Norman meant to the, these guys. Um, a, a comment I've just noticed as well come through on uh, uh, YouTube. Hi, guys. I've never met the great man, but I'm in tears delivering mail here in Norwich, getting some strange looks. Um, so uh, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's doing a fantastic job there, Ian. Thank you very much for listening in uh, this morning. And uh, we hope you're enjoying uh, this uh, Norman tribute uh, that we're doing for you uh, today on LS11. Keep your comments coming in on uh, Facebook and on YouTube, and uh, we'll get to as many of those as we can. Let's hear, though, from the uh, former Leeds United uh, goalkeeper, Nigel Martin, and uh, his thoughts on Norman Hunter. Norman was kind, funny, knowledgeable, but above all, a true gentleman. Someone who, if you met for the first time, you would instantly like. On the pitch, he could certainly look after himself in an era when you had to, but also could play with great vision. We will all miss him terribly at Leeds, a real legend of our club. Yeah, a, a real legend of the club. There's, there is no doubt about that at all. Thanks very much uh, for uh, Nigel Martin uh, chatting to us. Uh, still to come, we've got to hear from uh, Eddie Gray, but uh, we were lucky enough as well uh, to catch up with uh, um, one of the striking legends, certainly of the last sort of like uh, 15 uh, years or so, uh, Jermaine Beckford uh, chatting to us here on LS11. Let's hear his thoughts on Norman Hunter. Hi guys, um, I just wanted to say a few words on Norman Hunter and what he meant to myself. Um, right from the very first moment that I met him, he welcomed me with open arms and he was such a nice person, honest. Um, and, you know, he gave me a lot of good advice. Um, but the one thing that I would say about Norman that, that really resonates with me is the fact that he didn't change with me 
or with anybody that he encountered. I used to watch him when he was interacting with people all the time and, you know, he was always exactly the same. It's like he'd known everybody in there for, for 20, 30 years, you know, and, and that's something that will stick with me. And he always said to me, look, just be yourself, you know, just be yourself, be open, be honest. And if people like you, they'll like you. If they don't, they won't. But don't change who you are. Be yourself and be happy and be proud to be who you are. So, you know, that 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 meant a lot. So I'll miss him. I'll miss him. Uh, Jermaine Beckford uh, talking to us on uh, LS11. And um, uh, wonderful to hear, Ryan, from uh, Jermaine um, about, uh, you know, the sort of legacy and what, what Norma meant to him. Yeah, 100%. And obviously Jermaine shared some really nice words about Norman. And, you know, um, I think what everybody said about Norman, like, you know, the fans who are lucky enough just to bump into him at a game or or a train station or ex-players, ex-managers, people who have worked with him, everybody just how, just talks about how much of a nice guy he is. But not only that, he was a fabulous footballer. Um, you know, a stat about Norman Hunter, which is a brilliant stat, he was the first person first footballer to get the PFA Players Player of the Year when they first introduced that, which was in 1974. So it kind of shows you like how admired he was by his peers. So, um, you know, he, he were a fabulous footballer and a fabulous man. And, you know, some of the words that he said there to Jermaine Bedford, this is, you know, he's talking years and years after Norman had played football, but he's still around the club and giving little pep talks to current players. And I, 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 at the time, I just, yeah, I just think it's... Uh, um, He's just an incredible man. Uh, loads of comments uh, coming in, and uh, apologies if we've uh, missed any of them or if we're doubling up on them. Jill, Norman pushed for bowel cancer testing in Yorkshire 10 years ago. If it wasn't for Norman, my dad wouldn't be alive uh, for, for because of the testing. So that's uh, amazing. Uh, so thanks very much for that, Jill. Uh, Joe on uh, uh, Facebook, sad news about Norman. Met him at Ellen Road this season, came over and started speaking to us. A really genuine guy he looked at me and said, you must have been a centre-half. I nodded, smiling, and he responded, good with your head rubbish with your feet uh left a lasting impact as well uh and peter smithy smith um a great after dinner speaker was norman what a man i think he meant r.i.p at the end there um uh, so keep your comments uh coming in and good morning to Anne. she says uh, thank you very much for putting this tribute together well absolute pleasure uh, and we wanted to do our little bit in respect of uh, norman passing um of course the sad news uh, last week well let's hear uh, from one of Norman's teammates, shall we? Um, uh, Leeds United legend, Eddie Gray. Um, I caught up with him uh, a few days ago to ask him what his overriding memory of Norman Hunter would be. Well, um, obviously, an iconic figure at Leeds United Football Club. Um, guy, Norman. Um, and, you know, in this particular family, his wife Sue and kids Michael and Claire and his grandkids. You know, I know Norman went to all the games, but they all went to the games and made a lot of time for people, Norman. You know, that Norman Hunter suite at Ellen Road, it's the biggest suite at the club. And, you know, Norman would get around all the tables, talking to them a bit past and present times in the football. He just loved the football club. Um, but what I would say about Norman is I don't think I've ever played with a meta player that was as enthusiastic and as much out of the ability he had. You know, he, he really worked hard. And when he first came to the club, he was nearly Billy Bremner, say, or Peter Lorimer, you know, big schoolboy stars, you know, he worked hard to to achieve, you know, the status he had in the game. And I think without any doubt, if it wouldn't have been for the great Bobby Moore, Norman would have got 100 caps. Um, it was just a pleasure to play with. Um, he's a great footballer, you know, terrific footballer. Uh, but the, the thing that rubbed off and me most of it, Norman, was his enthusiasm for the game. Um, you know, I, I seen him doing an article a bit ago, you know, when he says since he was 15 and a half, they first joined the club, I couldn't believe how lucky he was to be a footballer uh, and have the opportunity 
uh, to do something they loved and still doing it. You know, up to, you know, a few months ago when football stopped, still going down the lounge and talking to people about their game and the club they loved. And what was Norman like as a teammate? I'm, I'm intrigued about what he was like in training. We know we saw what it was like on on the football pitch itself, and he was a, you know, a hard character. Um, Norman, Norman, Norman was exactly the same when he trained. <laughs> you know, that is when he played. Nothing changed with Norman. You know, but the, the good thing about Norman, if he gave you a kick in training, he'd pick you up and pat you in the head. Then he'd probably kick you again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just. He just loved the game. He, he loved, I mean, the, the bite your legs thing. Uh, I think he quite liked that. You know, I think he thought, well, let's put a few, uh, you know, into the players before they get on the park to face me. And off the park, he was soft. He was a soft man. He was a very soft man, Norman. Uh, he, he always used to say to us, I'm glad people stopped that fight with Franny Lee because he would have killed me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear me! I'd imagine. I mean, you've got, you, there's so many memories from that time, and I, I suppose you know there, there was obviously with the centenary last year. It was good that the, all of you guys were able to get together before. Obviously, we got into this uh, this terrible time where, where we've lost Norman. Yeah, I mean that was terrific, and it was great. Um, the, the city bestowed the freedom of the city on the players. You know. It, it came at a certain time, especially with what happened to Norman. And all the players got together then, and, and as you say, the centenary of the football club. And, and, I mean, everybody knows that Norman was a huge part of the football club. I mean, 700 and odd games, uh, played in every major event that the club won. And, and you know, I was, when, when I did the forward for his book, when his book came out, you know, what I said, you know, like then, um, still stood, even when he finished playing, his enthusiasm, he's, he just loved, he loved being involved in football. And that's why I said that, I think if it was, you know, you, you're talking to young lads about the game and how they approach it, he'd be the ideal guy, you know, training hard every day. His training never varied. His performance has never varied. I read a quote for Don Revy once. You know, you know, ninety percent of the games Norman played, he was great. The other ten, he was just superb. You know, I think that summed Norman up. I absolutely love that uh, from Eddie right at the end there. Um, uh, 90% of the games, it was good. Uh, the other 10% is unplayable. Just some wonderful words from someone that uh, that played uh, with Norman Ryan and, 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 and a wonderful way to sort of round up this uh, uh, this tribute for him. Yeah, definitely. And and he obviously, Eddie's up there with one of the, the Legion United greats as well, so it's lovely to hear from Eddie. And just hearing a bit about Norman that, you know, we don't always hear really, you know, um, in training, he'd be just the same person. He'd kick you, pick you up, pat you on the head, and then just kick you again. You know, I just thought it was superb, really. And and actually, I saw a clip of Norman Hunter playing for England, and um, England versus Scotland, and he absolutely flattens Billy Bremner. <laughs> and then he picks Billy Bremner up, pats him on the head, and then runs off, you know, and I, and I thought, there's no doubt he'll just kick him again, you know. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, just superb. And, and, Lovely to, to hear Eddie's words on, on Norman Hunter. A um, few more comments uh, coming in before we uh, wrap up the LS11 podcast uh, for this week and this very special tribute on uh, YouTube. Mavis uh, says, I just love Norm. I watched Norm play in the Reavy years and supported them all through the good times and disappointments. I'll never forget that wonderful time at Elland Road. RIP uh, Norm. Bobby says, I met Ben, Simon and Glyn at Cov Supporters Club event night before I win at Cov. Uh, clear they loved the club and appreciated the legends. Once Lee always leads some great tributes here uh for norman and uh one that i just thought we'd end on which is from facebook and andy gailey who said the day you met norman is the day you will remember for your life and i just think that's an absolutely gorgeous uh gorgeous way to uh uh to end the tributes uh to uh norman hunter of course who we uh lost sadly uh last week uh ryan thank you uh so much once again uh for this week really really appreciate your time as ever 
Thank you, Darren, and thanks for everybody listening. And a big thank you to the fans and and the ex players and managers that all contributed. Um, like I said earlier in the show, they was all very quick to um, reply to my messages and and give their tribute to Norman. Uh, and thanks very much, Ben. Uh, once again, um, you stay safe, and thanks very much for your contribution today, again, Ben. Yeah, cheers, guys. Um, all I can say is, I think Norman came out and said his um, his wish would see Leeds back in the Premier League. So. Hopefully we can, we can grant that for, um, f- for him and his family. Uh, let's hope so. Thanks very much, Ben. Uh, we'll be back, of course, uh, for LS11 uh, next week. Uh, big thanks, of course, uh, to our sponsors, of course, The Athletic. You can get uh, The Athletic with, uh, with this podcast for 50% off the annual subscription price and a seven-day free trial. Head to theathletic.co.uk slash LS11. And uh, also, big thanks to the Social Maze. Huge Leeds fans offering social media management packages starting from £99 and the Terra offering quality football merchandise you won't get in your club shop but we'll leave you uh with some of the uh, the best of uh norman hunter as uh we wish him well on his uh next journey of course thanks very much for joining us for this very special norman hunter tribute on ls11 an income tax return and, and there was a little note and there was the income tax return and there was a little note saying norman keep fighting you know <laughs> But it's uh, it's lighthearted. No, it's not. Uh, it's not serious. Here we go with Leeds United. And in my lifetime, I'd like to see us back in the Premiership. Stand up and sing for Leeds United. Inside for Johnny Giles. And Hunter coming up fast to drive it. Oh, and what a goal! What a goal by Norman Hunter. We're all gone. Hunter, what tremendous confidence there all along the penalty area. Past three Sunderland players by Norman Hunter. Marching on together, we're gonna see you win. The most important thing to me is that I came to Leeds at 15 and I've had an absolutely wonderful time.